Hello, I'm Marcus Louth and welcome to the first full-length edition of the UFO Insight podcast. We'll be discussing UFOs, alien abductions, conspiracies and mysteries and all aspects of the paranormal. Okay, this episode we'll be looking at UFOs, or more specifically, just what they might be. When most people think of UFOs, they perhaps think about aliens, extraterrestrial visitors from another world. And while that is understandable, there are plenty of other theories as to just what these curious objects could be. Okay, let's start with the most rational explanation, that UFOs are top secret military aircraft. Now there are two trains of thought to this theory. The first being that these vehicles are the result of highly advanced technological developments by the finest human minds. The second, though, is that they are the result of reverse engineered technology from recovered extraterrestrial aircraft. Let's start with the possibility then that UFOs are indeed the result of human ingenuity. Now, could this be possible? Well, yes, very much. It's not that much of a stretch of the imagination to think that various militaries around the world do indeed have advanced and experimental aircraft. And we know, for example, that various militaries have tested reconnaissance planes for decades in relative secrecy. Now, a general rule of thumb is that military and intelligence departments are usually around three decades ahead in terms of technological advancements than the general public realise. We should also look at the paintings of the TR-3 aircraft. Now, while these are not officially recognised, they do look rather similar to the infamous Black Triangle UFOs. Now, as their name suggests, these are usually huge black triangular-shaped objects, often with white lights at each corner, and sometimes with a red light in the middle on the underside. Now, these black triangles have been sighted for decades, but they became most well known during the Belgian wave UFO sightings of the early 1990s. Since then, though, they've been seen all over the world, with many reports coming from the United States, Canada and Europe. Could these particular UFOs actually be top-secret government aircraft? And if so, when will they enter the public domain? And if they don't, then for what purpose have they actually been built? What if there is a twist to all this, though? That at least some of these strange craft are the result of top-secret military programs, but ones that are based on the reverse engineering of recovered alien technology. So most people then know about the Roswell crash in the summer of 1947. There have though been several others both before and after the Roswell incident, where it is claimed that these crippled craft have been recovered by the United States military and then taken to an unknown destination. And it's not only the United States where these recoveries are said to have happened. There are several similar accounts from Russia and the old Soviet Union, as well as the United Kingdom. Now, it's understandable that it's a little hard for some people to believe, even for some people in the UFO community. Perhaps, though, we should turn our attention to Ben Rich, the one-time CEO of Lockheed Skunk Works, who were deeply involved in the production and overseeing of many top-secret US programs. Now, if we quote him for a second, he said, We have the technology to take E.T. home. Anything you can imagine, we already have the technology to do. But these technologies are locked up in black budget projects. It would take an act of God to ever get them out to benefit humanity. And it isn't just Ben Rich who claims the United States military gained access to alien technology. Jack Shulman, the president and CEO of the American Computer Company, claimed to have had files detailing recovered extraterrestrial technology from the Roswell crash, a document that he claimed was called the Lab Shopkeeper's Notebook. Now, he would claim that this technology was gifted to select companies to reverse engineer and then manufacture advanced products under the guise that they themselves had developed them, which he claimed that they duly did. What is also interesting is that Philip Corso, a one-time colonel in the United States Army, claims he was given orders to transfer recovered alien technology from the Roswell crash discreetly to nominated companies. Could it be possible that not only some of the developments of our modern world come from alien technology, but highly secret aircraft do too, ones that the public, perhaps intentionally, have been allowed to believe are vehicles from another world? Okay, so what other explanations can there be for these UFO encounters? Well, according to some researchers, at least some UFO sightings and incidents are the result of top-secret government experiments, essentially a continuation of the intelligence agency's MKUltra program. And there are several reasons for this, not least to simply ascertain just how far the perception of the human mind can be controlled and manipulated. 
Now, perhaps one of the best examples of these possible government experiments is the famous Antonio Villas Boas abduction that unfolded in Brazil back in 1957. Boas would claim that he was abducted by alien entities and forced onto their ship. Following several experiments, he then claimed that a female alien encouraged him to have sex with her, which he did, even claiming that they had conceived a hybrid child. Now, as truly bizarre as this account seems, even to people in the UFO community, Boas didn't once waver from his version of events. In more recent years, though, new intriguing information has surfaced regarding the case, mainly thanks to researcher and author Nick Redfern, who relayed the information in his book, Top Secret Alien Abduction Files. Redfern would highlight the revelations of whistleblower Bosco Nedelkovic, an apparent CIA employee, who informed fellow researcher Rich Reynolds that several intelligence agencies had played a part in the Boas abduction, and the reason for this was nothing more than to test just how much the human mind could be manipulated using a combination of props and mind-altering drugs. It was essentially an in-the-field experiment of the MKUltra program. It was claimed that the UFO that Boris witnessed was actually an unmarked black helicopter. However, due to the spraying of chemicals in the field where he was working, he perceived the helicopter as a UFO. Once he was incapacitated, he was taken to a secret location with several rooms inside, and further mind-altering drugs made him believe he was on board a spaceship. The female alien with whom he had claimed he had conceived a child was in fact a local prostitute who was given orders from the agency on how to act and what to say to him. Further drugs were administered before he was returned to the spot where he was taken. When he awoke, he saw the UFO, which was actually a helicopter, rising above him. It is perhaps interesting to note that intelligence agencies would often use a combination of mind-altering drugs and the services of prostitutes with their targets, and they did this for a variety of reasons, not least so they could use evidence of these liaisons for blackmail purposes, or to ensure a person's silence or cooperation. Might the Boas case have been a continuation of that, albeit for a different end goal? And might many further incidents have been the result of intelligence interference? To some, though, these UFO sightings have been used to distract attention from other, more earthly, dark goings-on. There have been suggestions, for example, that the many UFO sightings in and around Dulce, New Mexico, are not due to an underground extraterrestrial base, but are simply manufactured by intelligence agencies as a bizarre cover for weapons smuggling operations and high-level espionage programs. And while there is little evidence to back this up, it is certainly an intriguing possibility. If there is any truth to such suggestions, then we should ask, just how is this trickery achieved? Are people seeing legitimate nuts and bolts craft, only ones built by the military, or might they somehow have had their perception altered? Maybe there is a human involvement in these UFOs, not one from the present, but from the future. Could it be that UFOs that many people have reported over the decades are the result of human time travellers? Now, as bizarre as that might sound to some, we can rest assured that if the ability to travel through time was discovered at some point in the future, it is almost certain that time-travelling missions would go ahead. And while these would predominantly be for scientific purposes to begin with, it is also very likely that time travel tourism would also take place. Indeed, what to us is a complex and unsolved mystery could be to those hundreds of thousands of years into the future nothing more than commercial sightseeing adventures. Perhaps this might explain some of the potential sightings of strange aerial craft from thousands of years ago that are found in ancient writings and even in paintings. We only need to look at the simmering space tourist industry that will very likely achieve hotels in orbit around the Earth in the near future, and possibly even sightseeing trips to the Moon, to see that commercial time travel, in theory, will be more than appealing to many people, and certainly very profitable. There could, though, be a very specific reason for these speculative time travel missions. We might consider, for example, that environmental conditions and the climate will likely be much different in the future, and that time travelling missions to our own modern era could relate to this. Ultimately, could it be possible that time travellers from the future are coming back to specific points in the second half of the 20th century and early 21st century in an effort to save the environment in the future? 
With this in mind, it is interesting to note that many people who claim to have had close encounters with these alien entities often recall them being very human looking and are issuing warnings to them regarding how we are treating the planet and how we need to change our ways if humans are going to survive. And these encounters are many and they go back decades and decades. Perhaps this might also explain why the modern UFO era began in the late 1940s, when the consequences of human advancement showed these tentative signs, not least following the dropping of nuclear weapons to end the Second World War. It is worth keeping in mind speculative studies on how human beings might evolve, visually, many years into the future. It has been suggested, for example, that as more and more labour tasks are taken over by machines, that human beings will no longer be muscular and will evolve into having much thinner, even frail looking arms and legs as a result of carrying out less and less manual tasks. They would, however, likely undergo an increase in brain size, possibly resulting in a slightly larger head. Furthermore, if concerns about the future environment are true, humans could find themselves remaining inside, possibly even living underground, and so could develop a much paler skin over centuries. As a result, they will also most likely develop larger eyes as they adjust to the darker environment. Now, if you can form a picture of those speculative humans thousands, perhaps millions of years into the future, you might agree that they look very similar to how apparent grey aliens are described by many people. Might those who have encountered these grey aliens actually have encountered human time travellers from the future? There is of course another possibility, that these mysterious vehicles are not arriving from another time, but another dimension. We might note that many mainstream scientists have publicly contemplated the possible existence of other dimensions existing alongside our own. And furthermore, it has been theorised that these dimensions may, on occasion, overlap which would, albeit temporarily, allow access to these strange vehicles from their realm of existence to ours. And we should stress, we're not talking about just one or two other dimensions here, but many, many others. Now, if that is the case, that would mean multiple other beings and races are potentially visiting the Earth. And this might explain why there are multiple different descriptions of apparent alien entities, because they are, in fact, interdimensional beings, or unique to their own respective environments. Perhaps these alternative dimensions occasionally crash into each other, and so allowing us to temporarily witness these curious craft. However, if these UFO sightings are merely temporary and unintentional viewings of aerial vehicles from another dimension, how would that explain the alien abduction phenomena? With this in mind, might these interdimensional visits be of a more purposely planned nature? Might entities from another realm of existence be entering our dimension as part of unknown missions towards an equally unknown agenda? And if these vehicles are arriving here purposely from another dimension, then we might also ask, why exactly are they doing so? What are the purposes of these visits, and should it be a concern to us? Why would entities from another realm of existence wish to seemingly study human beings, and what might the end game be? Okay, rather than being visitors from another world, dimension or time, might the intelligence behind these UFOs actually be coming from a very own planet, right here, underground or perhaps even under the ocean? And might these entities not be alien to us or Earth, but actually another indigenous species, one that perhaps has discreetly lived here alongside us for thousands of years? Might they be connected to various people from ancient legends, perhaps even the gods of antiquity, who withdrew from public and lived unknown to humanity deep within the earth? It is interesting to note here that many UFO sightings happen over water, and these objects often disappear beneath the waves. There are also many such sightings near the world's mountains. If you further examine some of these ancient writings, many state the gods were extraterrestrial visitors who had come from an aquatic world and had ruled over humanity for thousands of years before putting selected tribes or families in charge as kings and then withdrawing from public view. It is also interesting to note that many encounters with these ancient gods often took place on mountaintops. If the occupants then of these advanced aerial and subaquatic vehicles do indeed call Earth home, might they be the descendants of the gods of ancient times? Perhaps, if we accept the remarkably long lives these gods are said to have had, might they even be the gods themselves? 
Without a doubt, one of the most intriguing theories as to what these UFOs might be is that they are a ghost vehicle from the ancient past. Perhaps the aerial vehicle of an unknown advanced civilization, one that once traversed the Earth's skies thousands and thousands of years ago. And if we take this speculation a stage further, might they be the advanced aerial vehicles of the inhabitants of Atlantis, or perhaps of the gods themselves? And with that in mind, we might ask once more, just who the gods actually were, and what was their origin? Now the idea is not as outlandish as it might first sound. There have been many apparent sightings of ghost ships over the centuries, as well as reports of trains being heard on rail tracks that are no longer used, and even cars that appear out of nowhere and then disappear again. In the late 2010s, there are even several sightings of mysterious ghost planes, aircraft long since out of use by the military, and they are reported to be flying over Derbyshire in the United Kingdom. And what's more, like many UFO sightings, they were claiming that these out of place aircraft were completely silent as they moved through the sky. The sightings began on the evening of 26th of March 2018, when, between 6 and 7 pm, multiple reports of these strange out of date aircraft came flooding in. The military claimed that the sightings were nothing more than a Hercules C 130 military plane on training exercises. Many of the reports, however, are full of detail and strikingly similar. And what's more, while some reports do appear to be describing a Hercules transport plane, many others describe a plane quite different, specifically a Douglas Dakota, a transport plane utilised regularly by the Allies during the Second World War. Now as well as a distinct lack of sounds, many of the reports would include strange detail of the entire sky turning eerily dark as the mysterious craft flew overhead. Several accounts would also state that one of the planes appeared about to crash, while another followed apparently giving chase. Were the military discreetly pursuing these seemingly suddenly appearing aircraft? Some witnesses would claim to be able to hear one of the planes while the other was completely silent. Many of the reports would state that the plane appeared to be crashing to the ground, however when it disappeared out of sight there was no explosion and when witnesses headed to where they expected to find the plane, no wreckage was visible. It was as though it had simply vanished into thin air. Might it be that at least some of the UFOs we are seeing are ghost vehicles from ancient times, perhaps the aerial craft of a lost unknown advanced civilization? Might this explain why they appear one minute and then disappear the next, much like a ghost or even a ghost ship? And if so, at what point in time did these vehicles roam the skies for real? Okay, before we wrap this up, there is one more quite mind-blowing theory that could explain UFOs, and it involves them being both real and imagined at the same time. In his book Paranormal Encounters on Britain's Roads, author and researcher Peter McHugh speaks of the psychic internet theory, which suggests the possibility, to quote McHugh, that people's minds sometimes interact at a subconscious level and generate paranormal phenomena. Essentially that many manifestations and apparitions could quite possibly be explained as hallucinations engendered by telepathy. McHugh asks, for example, whether there might be, both over history and in our contemporary era, a collective wish for evidence for proof of all manner of paranormal activity, from the appearance of ghosts to evidence of UFOs, and whether our collected minds, to quote McHugh, like computers linked to one another via the internet, might be responsible for at least some of the many strange encounters that surround all of us. Now it's certainly an interesting theory, and one that can be speculatively explored much further. A good example of how this theory might play out is if we take a UFO hotspot, a certain location where UFOs are regularly witnessed and have been for some time. Now many people with an interest in UFOs would certainly make their way to this location, and quite often when these locations are experiencing waves of sightings, many such people arrive at once, all of whom have expectations of witnessing a UFO. Now because of this coming together of like-minded expectations in one small location, the subconscious mind almost causes a UFO to manifest, so that all who are locked into this moment can see it. However, rather than being some kind of group hallucination, these manifestations are very real. Ultimately, they are solid objects. Now, as strange as all this sounds, we might remind ourselves of the legends from the creation times of ancient Egypt and the god Ptah. He would, essentially, imagine the world into being. 
Indeed, many ancient writings and creation myths speak of such notions, and many researchers state that these myths are actually speaking of the human mind, and the control, even if our conscious selves don't realise it, that it has over the reality in which we all exist. According to the legends of Ptah, he was said to create the universe through the thought of his heart and the utterance of his tongue, and he did this while sitting on a winged throne. Now, what is perhaps also interesting with these thoughts in mind are the apparent experiments by the CIA and the alleged Montauk chair. According to the leaks of information, and we should of course take them with a pinch of salt, the purpose of the Montauk chair and the experiments connected to it was to study the power of thought to manifest physical forms into reality. Now while it is rampant unashamed speculation, might the winged throne of one of the creator gods of ancient Egypt and the Montauk chair experiments, if indeed they did take place, be utilising the same power of the human mind? And if so, just how far did such experiments go? And of more interest to us here, might these subconscious mental manifestations be responsible for at least some of the many UFO sightings encountered around the planet? So there is, it would seem, a wealth of possible explanations as to just what UFOs could be. Of course, there might not be one solid answer. Indeed, the variety of different UFOs witnessed over the decades could very well suggest a different explanation for each one. Some of these futuristic objects could very well be the result of alien space travellers, while others might be highly advanced aircraft from our own military. And perhaps some are even human time travellers, or even ghost vehicles from thousands of years ago. And for each of these possibilities, many other possibilities then come into play. We should perhaps not be surprised that there are more questions and answers regarding UFOs and what they might be. Okay, thank you for joining me, and be sure to leave any thoughts in the comments, and check out the links for further reading on some of the cases and theories we have been discussing here today. Remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media to keep up to date on future podcasts, articles and videos. And if there's anything that you want us to feature on future podcast episodes, perhaps you have witnessed a UFO yourself or perhaps you have a theory you would like us to explore, then just get in touch at marcus at ufoinsight.com. Until next time, goodbye for now and take care.